Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to some of you. We are delighted to have you here with us for our Global Chamber Author Series. And today is unique in itself because we have rolled out for the first time as an inaugural component of our Global Chamber Author Series, a workshop. And this is a workshop for writers. So you may already be an author, you may be an aspiring author, or you're looking to collaborate with other writers jointly to write a book, you are in the right place. My name is Dana Austin, and I serve as the director for the Global Chamber Author Series as of this year, January, and um, executive director for Global Chamber Atlanta. I want to just share a little bit with some of you who may be on for the very first time about Global Chamber. If you ask me to describe it or find one word to sum up Global Chamber, um, exceptional in terms of what we do for business owners, CEOs, organization, entrepreneurs, and dignitaries. But our mission statement for Global Chamber is really to accelerate cross-border trade and investment in every region of the world. And we do that by engaging top executives, such as yourselves and leaders, with warm connections and timely information to grow your business and to create success to change the world, to make that level of impact. The vision for Global Chamber is a business world where it's as easy growing across regions as it is across the street. And we have 525 metros growing. We're across five continents out of seven and in 195 countries. And I was talking with our guests this morning right before we started. And I said, one of our guests is from Ababad. I think I pronounced it correctly. And I said, you know, if you ever need a connection there, we, can, we connect our Global Chamber members with ease. And she goes, I'll be there one day. Don't you worry. So I'm excited for that. A little bit more about Global Chamber. We are closely connected and, and definitely strategically aligned at our headquarters in Thunderbird in Phoenix, Arizona. We have um, Gloria Chambers Peterson on, um, who actually started the Global Chamber author series over two and a half years ago. She's in Phoenix, actually. And so we are aligned and our headquarters is in Thunderbird School of Global Management. So now Thunderbird has, we are in collaborations with them. So there's over 30 locations around the globe. That's in addition to our 525 metros and growing that we're there. So I'd like to take a deep breath and introduce to you our guest speaker for today. Our guest speaker today is none other than Ambassador Dr. Michelle Boone Thornton. She is a profound author. She is a professor, guest speaker. And I. she was also our guest speaker at the Transformational Writers Conference in Puerto Rico. I'd like to share a little bit more about her. Um, she is a friend. And, and she makes a positive impact wherever she goes in the world, and particularly touching the lives of students. And I have, you know how you have a few things open, so apologize for that delay. She's award-winning international speaker, author, and educator. She uses her platform for as the unmasking guru, and she'll tell you more about that, but she's phenomenal in that realm as well. But she uses that platform to educate, teach, and to inform people around the globe on the importance of emotional wellness and transformation that occurs once they've identified and, and, and managed to unbury or unearth these emotions that have been buried. And she believes that freedom from this bondage will help you reflect the likeness of the creator and live an authentic purpose-driven life. During her workshop, she combines her 25 years of experience in the field of mental health with the art of teaching. Her workshops have been heralded as master classes. I can attest to that. And Dr. Boone Thornton is a renowned instructor in the field of human services, psychological studies, and counseling ministries. She has earned the rank of tenured professor, department associate chair, and now I think she's even moved up a little bit more, but I have here assistant director of a PhD program. I think she's moved into the directorship role, and she helps students from all walks of life realize their academic dreams and become thought leaders who will change the world. What I can tell you with her as our keynote speaker, and Gloria can testify, and Stephanie as well, and perhaps Nicole, um, if she's on, 
of the impact of her workshop at our Transformational Writers Conference, helping us to unbury, to look at you know, ourselves in the mirror, and to show up as our uh, unapologetic, authentic selves. So I introduce to some and reintroduce to others, Dr. Michelle Boone Thornton. Welcome. And as you're um, preparing to speak, I would yes. like those who are on to type your name in the chat and where you are hailing from. So what city, what country, what state, Put that in there. We want to welcome each and every one of you. Again, hear ye, Dr. Michelle Boone Thornton. Good morning, good morning, good morning, global chamber members and just guests. It is my absolute pleasure to be here today. Um, I had the great um, opportunity to meet some of the members when we were in Puerto Rico. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, the leadership in this organization is phenomenal. Um, so I want to share with you a little bit about my book, about writing, and answer questions, anything you need to know. Excellent. Well, one thing, one stat that I find really profound um, when it comes to writing, especially those aspiring authors in the United States, that we have maybe 80% people that may say, I want to write a book. I want to write a book and a small percent, I would say less than 15 actually start and 6% will finish. So on this line, we have that population as well. And many questions that are often asked of me as the writer's coach as well is, where do I start? What do I even write about? I'm sure you face that and some others on the line who are authors as well. Um, have you experienced that before deciding what you were going to write on? I absolutely have. Um, and it's a normal feeling because, you know, sometimes we think our story isn't important, but it is. And mm -hmm. one way to really start thinking about what am I going to write about? Uh, what does the world want to hear from me? I look at it in, in the P's. And the first P is pain. You know, we all go through some things. We all have some struggles and we make it out on the other side. So it's important to share what that journey may look like and entail. Um, and then the next P is practice. We're all uh, professionals. And so there's something within our practice. I work with people and students that can be enlightening for other students. Um, you have so much to share. And then it's passion. What is it that really drives you? You know, what is it you wake up for? What is it that you do when you would do whether people paid you or not? And again, the last thing is purpose. We all have purpose. We all have purpose here on this earth. So there are so many things. There's your stories. There's stories of people who've impacted your lives. You can start anywhere, but the key is to start. Absolutely. I don't know if anyone is feeling as inspired, even with those four Ps that you shared. I think if we stopped right here, we would have got quite a bit and could just move on with it, but we won't because I've got questions for you. So I know you have written several books, one that I'm I'm happy to have been a part of that journey, but what was what is the title of your first book? If you want to show what you welcome to, and then how did you decide that this was the book that you were going to write to meet those four Ps, the pain point, um, what your, your practice or your expertise is, your passion and purpose? If you would. Well, the title of the book is Transforming Your Reality, Removing the Mask. And all of the covers kind of look the same. Um, mm -hmm. But one is a workbook, one is a companion journal, and one is the actual book. Um, the purpose for the book was really birthed out of COVID. You know, that was a time where we were isolated and the world was experiencing loss and grief and, and, and death. And it was happening so fast that emotionally we were just overwhelmed. And, you know, I started just writing little notes, you know, from where I had worked previously in mental health and what I was seeing and what I was seeing now. And one day I had just learned that, you know, a family member had died. This was after a couple of other members. And within that same hour that I learned that, I was on Zoom. I had a meeting. And nobody looking at my face on Zoom knew what I was feeling. And I thought, 
this is a mask. You know, mm -hmm. they don't really see what's authentically happening. And so that kind of opened the door and I started to write and started to write. It's amazing that what COVID has, the impact that it has had adversely on our world, but on the positivity that has come out of it and that being inspired to write your first book um, that subsequently led to the other. So if I were to make the connection from the four P's that you shared just moments ago, um, you saw a pain point. You saw that people were suffering, some in isolation or that were showing up on these Zooms because that became the norm. Wow. Uh, we're showing up with several layers of masks, hiding uh, pain, hurt, loss, uncertainty, and that we knew we couldn't function. So you were addressing a mental health crisis before it was even labeled as that. Wow, kudos to you, kudos to you. Um, you know, that speaks volume that you were in tune and you continue to be in tune and pivot where the needs are. So those were the factors that you considered when you were writing your first book. You looked from a pain point, you knew what your expertise, your practice was that you could bring and certainly you're passionate about it and purpose. How much did your personal experience and even your professional experience influence and help to shape the book and its title? Um, working in the field of mental health, I had the pleasure to work with children. And you know, many children don't wear a mask. What you see is what you get. What they think is what they say. Um, so I could see both sides of the mask. And I could see these children as they matured. And, you know, with the pressure from societies to always be happy, because that's the goal of everything, to always be happy from the moment kids are born. You know, the goal is to be happy. If you fall and hurt yourself, oh, you're going to be okay. Come on, mm -hmm. look at the bright side. So that push, that push. Um, and even as adults, we take that on to be happy and to always be searching for the happiness. And one thing that I've learned through my practice and working with individuals all over the world is that we look outside for mm. happiness, but that true happiness is within. Mm. Everything we need is within our true potential, our authentic selves. And my goal is to help people tap into who they were created to be. Wow, that is powerful. That is powerful. And you're absolutely right, because I have experienced, and as, as many of us have, especially if you have younger children in your lives, the brutal honesty that they bring, and they show up unabashedly themselves. And I, what I found is that they give us permission as adults to do the same when we spend more time with them. So my favorite group of people are little people and older people. Thank you for that. Um, and if you all have questions, you'll have an opportunity to ask Dr. Michelle Boone Thornton, but you feel free to put those questions in the chat room. And closer towards the end, we're going to have a breakout session, just two groups. So some will be in the room with her and then we'll switch for two minutes. And then so each one will have an opportunity to ask her or even some of our other authors. We got quite a few on here and I'm going to call them out by name so that you know who they are. There is a link that's just went through the chat that says, please put your contact information there. If you would, go ahead and do that. And we can share um, contact information as well as what you've put on for your, um, from your, um, your LinkedIn or your website. Thank you so much. So I've got, you so you know, I've got three more questions. We are nowhere near done. Um, I want to acknowledge that we've got people on from Qatar, from Texas, from Abdabad, from Japan, from Arizona, California, Philippines. Georgia, of course, and Maryland, Virginia area. Have you had the opportunity, Dr. Michelle Boone Thornton, to explore how your book would be received in other countries? Because when I think of, um, when you talk about a mask, some countries, a mask is a part of a culture. I mean, talking a physical mask. So have you had the opportunity to explore how your book would be received in other countries? And if so, what cultural factors did you have to take in consideration when presenting and doing workshops as you do so well in those countries? Absolutely. Um, when I was in Nairobi, Kenya, uh, the first time I went and, you know, I talk about empowerment, emotional wellness and mental health. I was very nervous about even mentioning the mask. 
You know, I just talked about uncovering, looking beneath, but I really didn't say the mass because in that country, the mass is tied to uh, uh, cultural tradition and spiritual and, you know, even seen as like a war mass. And I didn't want that to get crossed in any kind of way. And so I did not mention it at all, but it was so funny that after I spoke to the crowd, um, I saw people lining up to come and talk to me. And I thought, oh, okay, they want the book. They wanted to talk about the mask. They wanted to talk, they understood, they knew um, because there was this big uh, pull, a lot, uh, mainly for the young people who weren't practicing customs and traditions, you know, had gone on to college um, and it was, you know, stay here or move there. And it was an actual pull. And so um, we talked about that. There were issues that we deal with in the U.S., um, suicide, everything. So it was phenomenal how it was received there. And even though I didn't say the mass, they knew exactly what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very valid point. When writing your book, because we're talking to our audience today about writing, deciding what you're going to write on, and even your title, and as far even going as far as your design, what needs to be considered is what who's your audience? And is it a local audience? If it's a global audience, how that book would be received. Is that right? Absolutely. And you took all of that in consideration when traveling to Nairobi, Kenya, to do workshops and do presentation so that you, you can be heard. So these are some things to consider when writing a book, choosing a title, and so forth. I will share one example. This wasn't a book that I've written, but I was doing a presentation in Germany for a research company that I was associated with at the time. And uh, we had to put slides together for a week worth of presentation and being, I would say certainly I've been exposed culturally, but I was not, I was limited in my thinking as an American Bermudian. And so we had tanks on some of the pictures and the slides. I never thought about how it would be received in Germany from us as Americans. And it was offensive. It was offensive. So it was a lesson learned and that now and anything I put together, I'm thinking about who's going to see it. How will it impact them? Would it would it allow them to be open and receptive or would it close them off? And you've done a great job in that capacity. Um, anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, because, you know, sometimes and just thinking about your audience and who's going to see it um, and who's your target audience, you, you know, really have to think ahead. Because originally my target audience, and it still is women, but it was received so much by all races, all genders, everybody. And I remember before I went to Africa, my, my daughter had a roommate that lived in Cameroon. And I was mm -hmm. like, well, can you ask her about this mask? You know, should we, you know, because it was on the back of the cover. I'm like, uh, what, should we not take that particular book and just talk about it? And so I did take it and she gave me great insight, but I was still a little nervous until I came off of the stage, um, you know, because sometimes on stage, it's hard to read audiences, you know, you have the lights and stuff. But yes. when I came off and I saw them all standing there, I was like, okay. So um, it really makes a difference, but you have to really think about your audience, even when you're writing. You know, as a professor, you can sometimes write from an academic and a technical uh, mm -hmm. standpoint. And, mm -hmm. you know, I started thinking about it, you know, I'm really trying to help people um, mm -hmm. with emotional wellness. I don't want them to have to stop every other sentence and look up a word to try to figure out what's going on. So mm -hmm. I also included a lot of scenarios. That way people can connect their existing information with this new information that I'm giving them. And not only that, they could connect with me as the, audit, uh, as the author. Like, um, you know, she went through this too. She's not just writing from a point of her professional perspective. This is really happening. So those are things that writers have to keep in place. Yes. I like that. I do see some questions coming in. I'm going to raise those shortly. So don't worry, we're going to get to those when they're um, they're valid. So if you've got questions, they're valid, and this is the place to raise them. Um, I do want to ask you maybe one or two more questions, because I know that some of our audience 
who is new to writing or considering becoming a published author. Um, if you had one piece of advice, Dr. Michelle, to give to a writer that wants to become an author, but they're not really sure what to write about, what would you advise? And I, and for those who didn't hear the four Ps at the beginning, maybe she'll put this in there and I'll type it in the chat as well. So if you have one piece of advice to give one writer, inspiring writer who wants to become an author, but not sure what to write about, what would you advise? Um, number one, we all have a story. We're uniquely made. We have um, things that happen in our environment around us that could really help somebody else. Um, so you have a story. That's that's where you need to start. You have a story. And not only do you have a story, you know, human connectivity is real. Other people need to hear your story yes. because it could inspire, empower, and, you know, just make their day. It can be a saving factor. I've had people that read my book and say, you know, I really thought I was crazy until I read this book because I was feeling so many ways. And so just think if I didn't write it. Mm. Well, yeah, you're right. There's, there's people think that their story is not valid or doesn't have value and they don't write oftentimes. And the other factors that keep people from writing is fear, um, fear of success, fear of failure uncertainty as we're talking about on what to write on um, and not really knowing where to start. So we've got a wealth of information and people in this room, including yourself, that um, are authors and have gone through this journey. So I'm going to just ask our authors that are on the line in the reaction, if you could just raise your hand, because um, I want you to see that you're not alone. Others have had the same question of where to start, how do we do it? And they're here proving that it can be done. And I've coached um, and continue to coach writers to move through this journey and identify what their expertise is, as you have suggested, and then knowing who their target audience is. So one question that we have in the chat here, Dr. Michelle, is how do you, it's about publisher. Let me just find it again. Let's see. Righty. What was your criteria for choosing a publisher? This is directed to you. And then I'm going to ask one or two other people who I'll also publish. Um, perhaps, um, Gloria, if you would speak to that. And um, anybody else who'd like to. Yes, if you would. What was your criteria for choosing a publisher? Well, my criteria was a little different than your criteria will be. Um, when I started writing, I prayed and asked God to send me the people that I needed because I'm just writing. Um, and he said, you already have that person. My publisher is my son. He started writing early on. In fact, he wrote his first book at 14 and he published it himself. And so he just took the time just to, to, to learn everything about it. And so, you know, when I wrote this book and he had published two books already um, and was in the process of publishing others, I asked, I started asking him questions, you know, I, and I was working with Dana too. And so I thought, well, let's see what he can do. And so he answered a lot of questions for me, um, whether to self-publish or even go with um, uh, a known publisher. In the academic world, they do look at who the publisher is. You know, uh, you know, I think Kindle Publishing and some other big companies mm -hmm. publish. And so I'm like, no, I'm going to use my son. And I've looked at the books and compared them with other authors at the university. And I'm like, this is going to work for me. And so yes. that's how I chose him. Well, having met your son and having him as one of our speakers at the Transformational Writers Conference and our first time to ever have a mother-son duo to present so we broke, we're making history on so many accounts. Having met Sir Virgil Thornton and his books, his, several of his books that he has published, his work is exceptional. So that you shared your experience and your journey on how, how you chose your publisher. Um, Gloria, you have several books out and one that you just released and um, on mindfulness and mindfulness and Nicole Turner is a co-author on there. And I believe maybe one or two others that are on the line. Would you care to share with us, Gloria, um, how, what was your criteria for choosing your publisher? I know it's too early in Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, there we have like three main choices. It's self-publishing, it's hybrid publishing, and traditional publisher. And when I did my first four books, I did the literary agent route. I did get a literary agent. Uh, we did land a um, interest from uh, a traditional publisher. But in, in doing that, um, I, I have a thing about having control over my material, mm -hmm. especially when I want to use my material in seminars and I don't want a mother, may I, a publisher on everything I want to do. And I learned with traditional publishers, I don't know if that's true today, but then um, you lose some rights and you have your copyright rights. You have some rights, but you lose them too. And there is some mother, may I, issues going on with traditional publishers. And I didn't mm -hmm. want that. And, but then I didn't want to self-publish because I didn't know enough about the industry to do it correctly. So I mm. went with hybrid and hybrid is, you know, somebody you pay to help get your work out there, but they do the, all the details that you don't want to do. Like for example, uploading to Ingram and uploading to Amazon, they do all that for you. And I didn't want to have to figure that out. I just, mm -hmm. my brain didn't want to do that. And so I went with a hybrid publisher. <laughs> And you bring up a great point. I'm so glad you're sharing your experience with going with a literary agent, one being a novice, but wanting to, you know, do it the right way and get value for what you've put in to each of your books, all four of them. And the latest one I see over your shoulder there on mindfulness. So um, <laughs> you'll share with us where they can get your book and, and others too, but by the time we're done. Um, so yes, there's three different types of publishing. You have self-publishing, you have hybrid, which is a combination of you have some ownership and then you outsource some of it to professionals. And then there's the traditional publishing. So those are things to consider as well as time, budget, and a few other factors. Because if time is of essence and you have a, a shorter window, traditional is usually not the way to go because it takes longer if they have a whole mm -hmm. slew of other authors to consider. Hybrid tends to cut off shave off sometime because you're doing some of the work. And then likewise, um, the agent C is doing the other. And then self-publishing, that pace is on your, to you as a writer. Thank you, Gloria. Yeah. And the other thing is when you talk about traditional publishers, and you've made a comment already about time, uh, when, when uh, the, the traditional publisher, I think it was Banton, that we had very interested in my first four books, which were on professional development, said mm -hmm. it could take 18 months. I thought, no, I don't want to wait 18 months. Too much changes in 18 months. But <laughs> the the timeline for when them them to get the material out there was not not going to work for me. I wanted it out in six months, not 18 months. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's another, thing to think, that's another thing to think about is when you want your material out there. You bring up the point. Thank you for that. I'm going to allow if some one of our other authors, published authors, wanted to make a comment and to address that question about publishing. How did you decide on what was your criteria for choosing a publisher? Feel free to um, speak up and mute yourself if you would. Good morning. How, good morning, everyone. Um, Hailing here morning, from Stephanie. Frisco, Texas. This is Stephanie Austin. So I would say on my first book that I wrote, um, I did self-publishing. And my guidance, um, I worked with my sister, Dana. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dana was giving me so much advice because she had gleaned so much nuggets from everyone. And she would constantly send me emails just to kind of keep it for future references. And then as I began to write, I ended up self-publishing. And it was, I can say it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. I learned a lot. And then my second book, I believe I also self-published, but I ended up revising it through a publishing company. And that was a great experience as well. And so um, I would recommend that you know, see what's going to be best for you, what's going to be doable, uh, what makes sense. I have met Sir Virgil, and I must say, um, I'm going to be knocking on his door um, pretty soon in regarding my, my next two books that are coming out. So, and also relationships. I think having a publishing company that hears what your desire is, that's not going to change or try to mold you to shape you to what they want you to do, and they're giving you the freedom to be create, creative as well mm -hmm. as give you, you know, the appropriate insight in, in, in regarding to how to get your book out there, narrow down who truly your audience is, and then also how, you know, what is your purpose? What is your goal? Um, some people's goals are to be bestseller. Some people's goals are to have, you know, to sell millions of books. 
some my it's gonna be funny my initial goal is like i don't care how many books i sell it's a devotional i want to i, I want to just give this to people i want them to pay a, a nominal fee but it's not important for me to really how many numbers i want to sell and so i had a publisher and other people said stephanie your your information is intellectual property and it is great information that you want to share with others so be intentional because this is um, your asset. This is your asset. So don't Absolutely. take it, don't take it lightly. You know, and one of the persons that yeah. told me that, of course, was Dana. <laughs> and, and, and Nicole. And Nicole. Intellectual and Nicole. property. Yes, yeah, my intellectual property. So I've learned a lot. And I'm excited for where um, the books, my two books are going from there. And I must say, I do appreciate the Global Chamber author series. Um, Gloria kicked this mm -hmm. off. She is wonderful. I got to I get to got to meet her in Puerto Rico and love her dearly. And um, this is a great platform. And I appreciate this today. I invited a couple of people um, in having a workshop, having a digging deeper. I mean, this is priceless. I mean, you have to pay for this platform for someone to help Absolutely. you and to find out things and give you tidbits. Yeah. So I would say, make sure people we connect and make sure you register monthly join yeah or, uh, to join but make sure you register whether it's monthly for the global chamber author series or every other month make sure you join because this is um invaluable information thank you so much stephanie for uh, what you shared in terms of your decision to initially go with self-publishing um, for your first book, the second one, self-publishing, but then you edit it and brought a publisher on and then for your subsequent one that will be coming out soon um to consider Sir Virgil Thornton's publishing company. What we love to see happen here at Global Chamber Author Series, particularly this year, and, and I've been challenged by um, my core board, many who are on today, including Alex Devereaux, I see you, um, is to how can we measure the success of Global Chamber Author Series? And one way we're gonna measure it is to learn when you have books that have come out, our, our members, let us know when you have books that have come out. Every other month, we feature our authors where you have access to them and uh, and their books are featured. So we are doing it every other month. And I tell you, we are now down to October. It's filling up. Uh, so any authors that are on this line that are Global Chamber members, let us know. Reach out to any of our board members, Gloria, Alex, myself, and I'm not sure who else is on, but um, well, let us know. There's Shanker. Shanker. Yes. <laughs> I saw him earlier. Shanker is hailing all the way from Dababad. I don't know if I pronounced that correct, but Shanker, uh, chime, chime in. Ahmedabad. Again. Ahmedabad. You Ahmed say Ahmed? 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 Yeah. Ahmed Ahmed. We have Shanker on. He's our executive director, Global Chamber. Ahmedabad. Right. <laughs> Close enough. Look, I'm, we are so delighted. You know, one of the reasons that we decided to do the workshop early in the morning is because oftentimes those global chamber members, directors, leaders on the other side, beyond the continent of Africa and in and, and the UK, it's quite early, like three in the morning when we do it at 11 a.m. So we're giving opportunity for all of our global chamber author members, core members, to be actively involved in something live. So I know we have folks on from as far as Ahmedabad. We had someone on from Japan that called and told me she couldn't join us this morning. We have folks on from Qatar and other places. And I'm getting back to you, Dr. Michelle, but here's a question that is for you. So I'm going to read this one. And this is from Dr. David Knight. Um, two things. We would like for you to put Sir Virgil Thornton's contact information in the chat or let us know how we can reach him. And here's this question from Dr. David Knight. Did you, it's almost like I planted this, but I didn't. Did you have a writing coach? And if yes, what value did they bring or what impact did they have on your writing? 
Well, I really didn't have a writing coach, but as a university professor, you know, I've published very many journal articles. I've published chapters in book. So I have the opportunity to write and to read and to write more. Um, so writing, you know, that was an easy part for me. It's not an easy part for everybody, but it was easy for me. At least I thought it was easy. Um, my daughter is my editor. You know, I just use all my children, right? My daughter is my editor. Um, and so, you know, she edited my tenure package and other things too. So, you know, as, as good as I thought I wrote, she came behind me with a lot of corrections sometimes. So don't worry about the writing, just write it. Yes. Just put it down on paper. Absolutely. So that was for your first book, but I happen to know your coach you had for your second book. I do. I do. And that coach was phenomenal. Okay. I got to meet weekly with her and she just gave me all of this insight and, you know, information that I didn't even know about publishing and writing. And, um, it was Dr. Dana Austin. She was just wonderful. Um, and just going through that just gave me more freedom and confidence in my writing. And now I was really focused on what I was doing. Instead of just writing, it had focus. Yes. I want to say it was an honor coaching you because not just because you have written before, but because you were open and you showed up authentic. That made it easy um, as it has for others that are on here that I've coached, including Dr. David Knight. It made it easier to coach you through that journey. And we were able to get it done in the set time that we agreed upon, which was 90 days. <laughs> 90 days. So we're ecstatic for that. We are going to have a breakout session in just one moment. I want to ask this one last question. Um, as an ambassador, diplomacy is vital when you're considering others, including your readers. And you kind of touched on this when we were talking about the mask. But how did you consider your writers, your readers, when you wrote your first and particularly your second book? How did you consider your readers? Yeah, I wanted to make sure that people pretty much of all ages that would be reading this would understand it. I wanted to make it really clear um, and as simplistic as I could. I didn't want to use a lot of jargon. Um, and I used a lot of examples, a lot of examples so that they could make the connection um, and also understand that mental health, which is seen all over as a stigma, was really not one. You know, it was very commonplace especially after COVID. Okay. Wow, this is incredible. Well, this is going to make it easy for us to do our breakout session. We're going to break out in two rooms and we'll have about three to four minutes that we're going to ask this particular question of that room. Uh, what concerns do you have about deciding on what to write? Okay. This will give you an opportunity to speak with um, Whomever, I'm doing it kind of automatic, so I'm not really sure who's going to be in that room, and I apologize in advance, but um, you're going to have authors in the room. You're going to have Dr. Michelle in one room, myself, hopefully in another. If not, I'll be moving around, but you also have, and since they didn't identify themselves, I'm going to do that. This is what you call calling people out. We have Stephanie Austin, author, um, Global Chamber Executive Director of Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. We have Gloria Peterson, multiple authors well, founder of Global Chamber Author Series. We have Shanker, who's working on his book. It's going to be on leadership. We have Dr. David Knight, who is a book on success author. He's part of our advisory board for Global Chamber Atlanta. We have Mich Nicole Floyd Turner. She is advisory board for Global Chamber. She's also an author and she's published in the past as well. And if I have overlooked anyone, I do know we have our leaders that are working on their book, Global is Good. So Doug Brunke and Cesar Trabanco, that's coming. All right. So our question again, I'm going to put it in the chat here. What concerns do you have about deciding on what to write? So let's spend the next three minutes or so in the breakout rooms talking about that. And again, I'll just be going from one room to another. Stephanie, if you're in that one room, if you can kind of help move that one along. And um, here we go. Once you see breakout room, just hit accept. Or join, hit join.
For those of you that are still in the main room, that is perfectly fine. They're having the good, healthy discussion in the breakout rooms on how did they decide what they chose to write on, taking in consideration the four P's that Dr. Michelle shared with us. I'm gonna repeat those just so that we'll have the recording still going. One is consider the pain points in her situation where she was seeing several people at the start of COVID suffering from mental illness, um, isolation, depression, and, and just a need to really address mental health concerns. So that pain point was one of the things that motivated her to write her first book, her workbook actually. The other P is practice. She looked at her level of expertise in you know what she's good at and she practiced well. So being a professor who's a worked in mental health for um, decades, this was something that was a natural progression for her. And uh, with that said, she knew she could take her practice experience and apply it to these workbooks and make it where it have meaning and add value to help people move from where they were to um, a more positive place. And the third key that she talked about in her four P's was passion. You know, what are you passionate about? And uh, when, you, when you're passionate about something, it comes across naturally. It's not something that's forced. It's not something that's coerced. It just comes out naturally. You all know um, from my perspective that I'm passionate about a few things, but tea, tea ceremony and culture is huge. And of course, writing. Um, so whatever you're passionate about, definitely take that in consideration when considering what you're going to write. And then purpose. What is the purpose? Some of us write for various reasons. And then some of the reasons that um, people write is they want to just document and to have an account of, let's say, a moment in time or a series of moments connected through time. And they may document in a journal and then turn the journal into a book with no intent of, intentions of publishing, but just to have it all compiled nicely, maybe to pass down as a part of a legacy some point or um, maybe for a movie at a later point. Other reasons why people consider writing in terms of their purpose is to transfer knowledge, to transfer knowledge and information, um, you know, a how-to book or a, what about this book, or in this next case, um, another book that I will have coming out will be 101 T Houses to Experience Around the World. So that pur purpose of that book is to have people when they travel, they don't have to wonder which tea houses to go to if they have an affinity for tea, I would have already put that in there. And I will say I added a new one to my list um, last week, a friend visiting Hong Kong. I had him to scout out a few. So that will make it on my list. Hopefully I'll make it there to speak to it from a personal perspective, but purpose. So the other thing is people write transfer knowledge to create a legacy, something they want to pass down. Family. I mean, I, I often think of cookbook, but it's not just cookbook that people pass down, but those recipes are invaluable. And Oftentimes they'll say, well, I watched grandma do this. Or I watched dad do this, but I don't know how they did it. So creating a legacy in their book, that's one of the purpose and passing that knowledge on. And it could be a book on how to start a business. Again, passing that information on as a legacy. So considering those four P's that she has, the pain point, your practice, your passion, and your purpose, those are vital. And then the last thing that she and I we're talking about and she shared with you is to consider your audience. It's imperative that you know who are you writing for. It may be say, oh, I want to write a book because I just want to get this off my chest. But if you want others to read it, you have to really write with your reader in mind. All right. I'm going to try to bring our group back with us in just one moment. I'll let them know.
Welcome back. Welcome back. Delighted to have each of you back in the room. I hope you can hear me okay. What I want to know from at least one or two of you is what did you glean from that breakout session? Because I know three and four minutes goes by quickly. <laughs> and then you say, I want to do it again. We may have time for one more, but we'll, I want to at least entertain the question. And then I have someone, is it Kalipad? Do you want to speak? Prasad? Hi, Prasad. Yes, yes please. Yes. So I, uh, please thank, go you, ahead. thank you for the breakout session. Uh, I think I had a, a great uh, insight into how to go about doing what we want to do, you know, how to prioritize and then which one to choose. And sometimes what we choose may not be the final thing that we do. So we need to, if we get other topics, we we jot them down as we go along so we can uh, we can pick it up as as time goes along that's a great learning for me absolutely and where are you hailing from uh from Ahmedabad where uh, Shankar belongs to i figured Ahmedabad i've got it now welcome thank you <laughs> and thank anyone you. else um, maybe in another chat room that uh, Passat was not in that can share what was your experience in this breakout session what did you glean And that was a room uh, that was yeah. I, I will call, I will call on Rosalind because uh, Rosalind, she Rosalind, can you share? She's new to this, and yes. so Gloria asked her a good question. So Rosalind, can you share? Yes, you. I was Thank just you. about to do so. <laughs> I was telling them that I have gleaned that it's important to start writing your story because everyone has a story. But if mm -hmm. you never put it to pen and paper, then you can't share it with others per se. Mm -hmm. But it's important to start writing. Absolutely. You know, as a writer's coach, it warms my heart to hear you say that. And as Pasad said earlier, write down your ideas. They may change, but write them down. So one of my um, saying is write on, you know, it's like a play on words write on and then write on, just write on. And then you can clarify as you go along which book you want to start on. Some of you may have two or three books in you. One of my um, authors in my previous 90 Days to Manuscript, he had about five books in his head. <laughs> I said, okay, well, let's press that out a little bit more and see which one um, you're most passionate about and which pain point would this address considering the audience. And he was then able to focus on one because what we want to do is get it done and to complete it because we want to be a part of that small group that completes it less than 10% and start and complete a book. Okay, let me just look at the time. You guys found any value in that? If so, put a little thumbs up. And also in the chat room, we have a opportunity for you to fill out that contact list and share some more information on how people can reach you. So please, please be sure to do that. All right, I'll put that link here one more time. All right, we have about, I think we can do one more. You wanna do one more breakout session? Okay, let's do it. Some of you might end up in the same room because I'm, I'm doing an automatic versus a sign and that's okay. Then we'll just allow other people to have questions. Here we go. So the question in this room, let's go with a different one. Uh, let's go with um, what is keeping you from writing your book or your next book? What is keeping you from writing your book or your next book? Okay, you ready? Let me mix it up a little bit. One room is heavier than the other, but here we go. One moment, sorry. I think I have to close the previous room and start it again. So the question for this breakout room is what is keeping you from writing your book, your first one, or your um, subsequent? It's saying we need 47 seconds more because some people will still hang it out in the um, breakout room. So once that closes, we'll do that. 
Anybody has any questions for Dr. Michelle at this time? We'll entertain one while we'll wait for the breakout room to start. Okay, well, you know I have one, so I'm gonna bring the last one in this particular session. So Dr. Michelle, I will say, um, when you wrote that first book, the cover and the title and the design was something that captured my attention. What consideration did you have going into that? And I'm gonna ask the same thing of Stephanie because somebody else mentioned on the chat room um, that they were deciding on one thing, but they felt pulled to go another direction. This is gonna have to serve as our breakout session because of time. So what your book title, design, color and everything is captivating. So what factors went into designing that and then Stephanie, you'll be the last one with the question and then we'll close with some global chamber. What's next? Okay. Dana, I think you got everybody back in the main room. Okay, great. Great. Thank you, Doug. And then and then Doug will our CEO will close up our session after we these two questions. And then we'll share more information about what's coming next in Global Chamber Author Series. Um, and then if you have it in the chat, there's a link that says, please enter your contact information here. If you do that, that allows us to um, share information with you, invite you for some future events. And all of you that have registered will receive the newsletter from Global Chamber. As a member, you get it once a week. As a guest, you'll get it once a month until you become a member. Okay, Dr. Michelle Boone Thornton, last question for you is, what factors went into your design, your title, and your cover? Because it pulls you in. Absolutely. Word. Absolutely. Well, I wanted to talk about the mask. So I wanted a, a image that showed the layers of the mask because we mask different emotions and each emotion is a layer. So I had the face underneath the real, true, authentic person and then all of these layers on top. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes in my workshops, I go into matching the colors with the emotions. And so mm -hmm. that's how it kind of came to me. Yeah. Nice. I love that. Stephanie, Austin, could you also speak to your book design cover and, and title and color um, formatting? Because Absolutely. I know that that was one thing and then it shifted. Absolutely. Um, what went into the my design and cover is that um, I was praying about well, God gave me the name of, the, of my book, My Will or His Will, will right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and him giving me, me that name, I had decided I knew who that I want the audience to be. And so, I, I, you know, if you want to watch God laugh, you just tell God what, what he's going to do. And he stopped giving me the nuggets and stopped giving me images of what it's going to look like. No, actually, I didn't have a name. I had I just knew that what I wanted. And so when I finally surrendered, he gave me the title, which was my will or his will. I said, really? <laughs> so, we, so we're going to do that to me, you know, because I'm over here struggling about what I wanted to do versus what God wanted to do. He gave me the title. He gave me the image and he gave me the color. And mm. so that's how I was able to come up with my my image and my color of my book. Wow. So yours was like a, a, a surrender, really surrendering to the process. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as your as your daughter, who's also a, an author, multi -top, multiple author, who we've also helped coach too, she says this all the time: trust the process. So yeah. I want to put that quote out there for um Crystal Elise, an author, and thank Dr. Michelle Boone Thornton for being our inaugural speaker for our Global Chamber workshops. Welcome. And, and you guys give her a round of applause. You can do it in the chat room. We are so appreciative. I think this has been exceptional by the interaction and the engagement, because one of our purpose for the Global Chamber Author Series is to engage with authors. And you have allowed us to do that on a, a very high level. And we thank you. Wow. The Global Chamber Author Series is a vibrant community of writers worldwide where we connect, share our diverse experiences, and inspire through books and now workshops, collaborative projects, and leadership initiatives. We are trusting that out of these connections, 
two things will happen. If you're not a member of Global Chamber, the author series is just one key component of what we offer. We do more for members, CEOs, business owners, and dignitaries that you will join. The other piece is that you, as members, you get first dibs on being a presenter for your books um, for our, our author series. So we've got two people already slated for next month. That, um, Gloria Peterson, who's on, she's going to, with her new book, she'll be presenting that. And uh, we have another one. So we're really already lined up to June. And then we just filled up October right here in this session. I love it. So we still have um, okay. August, June, August, and we have October, August and December, sorry. So or if I can jump in, Terry Morrison, who wrote Kiss, Bow, Shake Hands, yes. that's going to be in March. And you do want to hear her. Absolutely. Absolutely. So those two will be there in March. And that date is going to be the third Wednesday. I believe it's the 20th. Mm -hmm. And um, Doug, we're going to give you the floor. Oh, thank you, Dana. Uh, this was this was awesome. And I think, you know, when you came up with this idea to do the workshop, it felt like a good idea. And I think you demonstrated today how good of an idea it is. Members of Global Chamber are not only looking to make money, they're looking to have impact. They're looking to make a difference in the world. And the actual workshop, the hands-on information, what we heard today the, uh, was really helpful, very uh, uh, impactful for us to make an impact. So thank you, Dana, for making that shift, changing this or adding this component to the book author series and uh, just love your leadership. Thank you for today. It's awesome. Thank you. This is Doug Brunke. He is our CEO and founder for Global Chamber. And one thing he always says about his incredible team is that they're amazing, but we could not be amazing without an amazing leader. We, um, we just value you and how you allow us to lead to fulfill the mission and the um, vision for Global Chamber. So for those of you who would like to join Global Chamber, you have an opportunity to do that by going to globalchamber.com. You had a link in which you had to register with. And you know I know that may have not been as easy for a few, but you're here, so we're glad. So I put the link there, hopefully I spelled it correct, and you just click join. You'll be affiliated with whatever metro that's in your region, but you have access, as you can see, to the global um, tribe of a global chamber. So we thank you. And for each of you who are, um, I want to acknowledge Ruby from Ghana. She's executive director interim in Accra. I also want to acknowledge Terry Levine, who's in Utah. He's on the advisory board. Uh, Cesar Travanco, who's our vice president for Global Chamber. Hey, Cesar. Hey, Dana. I, I wanted to jump in for a second. I wanted to show Perfect. something for Dr. Boone Thornton. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> she started talking about the mask. I'm like, I know it's that somewhere close to me. It was hanging there in front of me. So wow. that, but that was a really good workshop. Thank you, Dr. Yes, thank you. And I'm glad you put that out there. Dr. Michelle, please put your link on how people can find you on your website, LinkedIn, how they can get your books. Please put that in the chat as people are just kind of tying things up. And so glad you pulled that out, Cesar. I will say to Nicole, um, I have your mask because I know you are a minimalist and you left it behind. I was but... wondering where it was. Thank you. <laughs> oh, got it. And thank you, Dr. Knight, for joining us, Dr. Rosalind, Terry, and um, Lisa in the Philippines, Gloria. I'm, I hope I'm getting everybody. There were some other guests on, and the Prasad and Shanker and Stephanie. We are just delighted. Can I Go say, ahead. can I say, um, uh, Carolee, yes. Carolee Moore, she's on. She's a guest. She's here in Frisco, Texas, and her and I met yesterday. She's interested in a book and potentially maybe in the future, Global Chamber as a member but she's on today and she has a phenomenal business. She's going to be joining us as a guest on many other programs where she'll be able to share what she does. So Carolee, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank, thank you for the you invite, so Stephanie. You're welcome. <laughs> so glad you joined us, Caroline. And um, someone asked me to put my link in there for, um, for coaching writers. So I'm going to put that on there too. Okay. Transformationalwriterscomference.com.
you can find us there. I know we've gone over. And with Global Chamber, we have Globinars throughout the day. So usually we leave from one and jump into another. But you'll learn in, as a member that we have so many offerings, over 700 Globinars will are slated for this year. And you just joined one. Have a great day. And um, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Thank you so much. Thank you. So glad Thank you're you. on. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. I just put the link there if you're still there. Thank you, Passat. Thank you. Bonjour, Terry.